YouTube family, what is good, man? So recently, I got to have a sit down with my guy, Jalil Moon, who is also a young entrepreneur here from Lorraine, Ohio. And we got together and had some really good conversation pertaining success, how to grow, and the importance of foundation and everything surrounding personal development. So I'm gonna show you guys a clip from the interview. And if you wanna check out the full length interview, I'll leave a link down in the description where you can go ahead and check it out. But without further ado, let's get to it. And I believe that's where you should revert back to your foundation. Yep. Um, you know, foundation is extremely important to me. Um, you know, I keep it in my thoughts every day. It's kind of like my why on why I do the things I do. Uh, talk about what your foundation is just a little bit. So, I, don't, I would say the importance of foundation, I was like, you literally can't build anything without a solid foundation. So, um, I was listening to a podcast with Eric Thomas, which many of you guys know as like a motivational speaker. And he was talking about um, a show that he was watching and um, there was this building called the Millennial Tower. And this was one of the most beautiful buildings like ever. It was all glass. It took years to make. And there was a couple that stayed there that were like investors in the building. Mm -hmm. And one day out of nowhere, like a marble fell. And he realized that the marble like went this way and then came back. And in his head, he was like, man, you know what? Marbles aren't supposed to do that on their own. So he made some phone calls and um, what they found out is this big, beautiful building that they worked so hard on was built on sand, right? Wow. And um, it's crazy because that's like us, right? Because if they would have dug a little bit deeper, and if they would have, you know, they would have hit bedrock and they would have been on solid foundation. Right. But they built it on sand. So it takes one circumstance, one bad situation for that whole thing to collapse. All that hard work and all that stuff that was put into the building just gone. Yeah. So I would say that comes back to us as well. A lot of us have our life built on something like sand, something that is not of substance, something that can easily be, be taken away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. YouTube, what is good? So, to start off this cut, we're gonna go ahead and create our bald line. And we're gonna start directly below the bottom of the ear. And I'm just using my trimmer here to set this line in. I'm not pressing too hard, so I don't make it too difficult on myself to get rid of that first line. And you'll also see I'm being really careful, especially in the bottom area of his neck because that area tends to be really sensitive. So I'm just letting the weight of the trimmer and the shaver do the work. And right here, I'm just getting it slightly closer to the skin with the shaver. So that way that taper can really pop and last a little bit longer, right? And now to go ahead and get into the second step, we're gonna go with our clipper all the way open, no guard. And right here, we're gonna go up about a half an inch and we're gonna keep that same exact shape that we created with our um, bald line, right? Which is just straight across. And you'll see I'm combing, or if you're using a brush, you're brushing as you do so. So that way you can ensure that you're getting a nice even cut. And now to go ahead and get rid of that line between the bald and the open, I'm gonna go in with my clipper closed. And then I'll gradually start to open that lever until that line is blended out. And now to go ahead and go into this, uh, this, the next step, we're gonna go with our number two guard all the way open. And right here, this is just to go ahead and clear some bulk so that way we have um, a lot of a, uh, like a lot of a cleaner canvas to uh, do this taper. So I'm, I'm going in with my two guard open here and I'm just coming off the shape of his head. I'm flaring out, trying not to create any lines that are too harsh. And now I'm gonna come in with my one guard all the way open going up about a half inch to a full inch here still keeping that same exact shape staying real consistent with it making sure that the guidelines are nice and even so you're gonna see me point out that line in between that two guard open and that one guard open so to get rid of that line I'm gonna come in with my one and a half guard all the way open and then I'll gradually go ahead and close that lever until that line is as blended out as possible. So right there, I went and open, and then I closed my lever halfway. 
and I'm just attacking that line, trying to get it lightened up as possible and as blended as possible. Again, continuing to brush, especially with this hair texture, because when you cut against the grain of this hair texture, it wants to bunch back up and curl. And now to go ahead and get rid of that last line, we're gonna go with our half guard all the way open. And again, we're gonna go in open, and then we'll gradually close that lever until that line is blended out. And if this half guard doesn't do the job, we'll go ahead and take off the half guard and use our blade open. But right here, I'm going in with my half guard halfway, and I'm opening it slightly. And you can see if you trust that process and if you're consistent with it, that taper or that blend or the whatever haircut you're doing will come together. It's just about having patience and finding that system that works for you. And now to go ahead and blend into that bulk that he has on the sides and top as best as possible, I'm going to come in here with my three guard all the way open. And you'll see me start to flare out just because I want to maintain that shape. I don't want to give him you know the flat top look or dig into the curls on the side too much because he really emphasized that he wanted to keep the hair on the sides so I'm, I'm continuing to comb or brush and I'm doing some detail work here with my one and a half using the corners to get into those dark areas and this right here is just that detail work that's gonna separate you from everybody else in the game right because most people would have just went through their steps and left it as is. But since, um, you know, I'm a perfectionist and I know my subscribers are perfectionists, we go ahead and detail and so that taper or blend is as blurry as possible. So I'm going in with the corner of my blade here. Again, that taper looking right. And now we're going to get into the taper on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and debulk the sides just slightly with our three guard. And I'm just creating shape here, so I'm flaring out. I'm not digging into the hair too much on the sides. I just want to get the hair out the way so we have a nice clean canvas to work with when we start this taper. All right, so let's get into this taper. So I'm going to go ahead with my clipper close, and I'm starting at the end of his eyebrow and then going to where the ear connects to the head. And I'm creating that first initial line. And I'm using my clipper here instead of the trimmer just so i make it easier on myself to go ahead and get rid of that first line right so i went in with my clipper closed and then i'm gonna bought everything under that with my trimmer and now i'm gonna come in with my clipper all the way open here and i'm going up about a half an inch here and you'll see i'm kind of giving that sun shape uh just slightly and that's because i want to keep that arch area or that c cup area dark so when i go ahead and line it up that taper really pops and then to get rid of that line in between that open and bald i'm gonna go in close and then open that lever gradually which was fairly easy on this side of his head because of his hair texture and now i'm gonna come in here with my one guard all the way open again going up about a half an inch and you'll see me just continuously brushing getting the hair nice and laid down and now right above that one guard open i'm gonna come in with my two guard all the way open and I'm doing kind of the same thing that I did with that three, but this just gets it a little bit closer. I'm creating shape here and then just flaring out into the hair that he has on the sides. And now right below, below that two guard open, I'm gonna come in with my one and a half open and then I'll gradually close the lever as you guys just saw until so that line is blended. See, I brush that curl down because you see what I'm saying when you cut against the grain it pushes that hair up and it makes it just want to stay curled but you want to make sure that it's laid down nicely so that taper um, will always be blended you know what I'm saying and now to get rid of that line that I just pointed out I'm gonna come in with my half guard open and I'm using a lot of the corner of the blade especially in this area and then you guys just saw me close that lever slightly so I'm going in open and if that open does not do the trick, I'll just go ahead and close the lever until the line is blended. But the reason it's important to use the corner of the blade, especially in this area, is because you're working in a small, tight, confined space. And what using the corner does is allow you um, to detail that taper without taking uh, too much hair off, you feel me? And you'll see me use a three guard right here behind his ear. And that's going to make sure that when I go ahead and line up behind his ear, we have a nice crisp line. With not too much overhang over it, you feel me? Just continually combing. 
and you're gonna see me do a little bit of clipper over comb using my taper comb here and that's to give it a nicer transition into that that length on the sides and then I freehand some bulk and what the thinning shears here is gonna do is soften everything up right the thinning shear is not gonna take off too much hair what it is gonna do is just get rid of any um lines while still keeping you know the shade of darkness that the hair has and now to go ahead and blend into the beard we're gonna do the same steps as we did with the taper I'm gonna go in open and then close that lever gradually to get rid of that line and it's a little bit easier to blend into the beard uh, I, just because you know the gradient or the texture of hair on his face just blends a lot easier so this is my one guard and then that pretty much blended into the beard you feel me? And now getting into the taper on the other side it is gonna be the same exact steps as we did on um, the left side of his head right so I'm gonna let you guys just follow along here I'm not gonna give as much instruction I'm gonna let you guys kind of put the pieces to the puzzle together yourself but as you guys can see in this video I switched it up I went back to my seniors my corded version and um, I don't know I like to do that sometimes I like to switch it up because if I get too comfortable with the clipper you know what I mean I just want to always keep myself on my toes so I went ahead and just grabbed those corded uh, seniors so as you guys uh, heard in the beginning as I explained in the beginning uh, I got to sit down with my guy Jalil and we had that dope little interview I showed you guys a clip and if you checked it out and are interested in seeing the whole video um, I have left the link, the link in the description where you can go ahead and check out the entire interview because as you guys know if you've been following me on my channel um, I'm super into personal development and you know being inspirational adding value to others so if you want to hear some gems and get some encouragement I really encourage you to go ahead and check out that full interview I have with my guy Jalil um, his channel is super dope he's still early on in the channel but he has some really good content on the way so yeah if you guys want to check out that full interview just hit that link in the description and it'll take you right there Alright, so let me hop back on here. So uh, right here, I'm just using my three guards to go ahead and blend into the length that he has on the side just a little bit better. Again, creating shape. You'll see me flare out and not dig into that hair too much. And right here, I'm just pointing out the line in between that one open and that two guard open. And I'm getting rid of that with the one and a half open. And then you'll see me just gradually start to close that lever. And if this is sounding repetitive, it's because it is right because if you find a system of fading or find a system of cutting that works for you i really encourage you to learn to master it and then after you master a specific way of fading then you can go on and um use other ways of fading right so find one that's comfortable for you and just go ahead and perfect that joint so right here i'm using my one guard open and just detailing a little bit using the corners of my blade And then I went to my half guard and I'm using the corner right here, playing with that lever until I get all those dark spots blended out. And you can see I'm cutting sideways towards his eyebrow here and that's because his hair is growing towards his ear. So I want to make sure that I'm cutting against the grain at all times. So that way I can get the most even cut and get that blend as blurry as possible, right? And again, I'm doing that uh, clipper over comb kind of free uh, not free handing i don't know what i was saying but then right here i'm using my thinning shears and i'm attacking those dark areas trying to lighten them up and now we're going to blend into the beard by going with our clipper all the way open and then getting rid of that going in closed and then opening gradually and then we're going to come in with our one guard and the one guard didn't do the job on this side, so I grabbed my one and a half, and I'm just flicking at that line until it's as blended as we can get it. And 
now we're gonna go ahead and line up behind his ear and nape area so you, you saw me go ahead and comb the hair down and then I'm starting at the top of his ear and then you'll see me go to the bottom and connect it in the middle and that's gonna allow me to get that nice round shape around his ear without um, digging into the hair too much to where it doesn't look natural right so I'm trying to get that nice that that line nice and sharp and then you'll see me comb it all down once again and then we'll go ahead and reline it and that's gonna ensure that we have the you know the crispiest line possible that's gonna last the client the longest And now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. I'm starting at the top of the ear. Being conscious of the fact that I don't want to take it too high above his ear. I want to keep it natural. And then I'm going to go to the bottom of his nape area and connect it in the middle. And that's going to get, allow me to get that nice round shape, you know, around his ear. Without digging into it too much to where it looks unnatural. And then I'm relining it once again just go ahead and sharpen it up some more and that really brings the taper to life especially from this angle clean up his neck a little bit and now for his hairline we always section it off um, from the curls on top it is just a preferred look you know what I'm saying not everyone gets it like this but I went ahead and tapered it down with a one and a half and then I'm gonna go ahead and start in the middle of his head and I'm gonna work towards the right side and I want to go ahead and get this as sharp as possible at this but at the same time keep it as natural as possible you feel me so I'm going ahead and trying to follow that natural line without getting too cosmetic or digging into the hair too much and then for the arch I, I kind of do the same thing as I did around the ear and nape area I start at either the top or the bottom and then I go to the opposite side and then connect it in the middle and that is how I'm going to get that nice round C shape without digging into the hair and having that weird grow back look in between haircuts now I'm gonna go ahead and detail that line just a little bit more and you can see how it really brings that taper to life that's a better look at it and now we're gonna do the same thing on this side so I'm starting at the top of his arch and then I'm going to the bottom and then I'm going to connect it in the middle. And there you go. That's how you get that nice round C shape. That was really hard for me. You know, starting off, I would always dig into the hair way too much. And now we're going to go ahead and line up his beard. He didn't want to touch any length or even out the bottom with the top or anything like that. So we're just going to go ahead and line up his beard how he has it. So I'm lining up the back right here. And especially with the back, I find barbers push um, that in too much, so I kept it natural. And then I'm going to start in the middle of his neck and then um, work towards the outside of his, of his neck, right? Letting the trimmer do the work, because again, the neck is a very sensitive area. And then you'll see me recomb the beard. So that way I can get all those extra hangover hairs and make sure that this line is as sharp as possible. Being super detailed with it, right? You want to be detailed. That is what's going to separate you from everyone else. And the clients definitely do notice when you're detailed. And now, again, with the top of the beard, family, I have a system. So I start at the top of the beard. And then I'll just work my way down until I get that nice round C shape. Keeping it as high as possible. He doesn't want to dig into it and give himself a chin strap. You want to make sure that you're pulling the skin so you don't cut them. And then you want to brush away that first initial ash line. And then you want to go ahead and reline the beard up so you can ensure that the client has the sharpest line possible. now we're just cleaning up his mustache here getting it off of his lip keeping it natural again you don't want to you know line this up way above his lip to where it just looks weird and we went ahead and cleaned up the top did the same thing to the other side and now we're going to go ahead and apply some enhancement to his hairline area to go ahead and take this haircut to another level 
so I want to go ahead and brush this hair back so I get the color on the skin that is how you're gonna get the effect of it looking super full and lasting the longest right so I'm going ahead and just spring exactly where I lined up his hair keeping it as natural looking as possible we don't want to make it look painted on and then after it's dry we're gonna go ahead and comb the hair back down in place and that's going to give the illusion that his hairline is fuller, right? Real natural looking, real clean. And now we're going to go ahead and hit this baby with the razor. You want to make sure that you're always stretching the skin. And this is just getting rid of all those hairs that the trimmer couldn't get. And getting that hairline as sharp as possible. So, as you guys saw, my man came in looking rough, but we went ahead and put him in a game with a nice mid taper. We went ahead and lined everything up, transformed this man's whole look. But family, if this helped you in any way, shape, or form, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this cut. And family, do me a favor and follow me on Instagram at DreClipperHands. But again, thank you for watching this video. I will catch y'all next time.